Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we're honored to be sitting down with Lethbridge County Reeve, Tory Campbell. Rich pasture and grazing lands in Lethbridge County produce some of North America's best beef. Serving the area's livestock industry are some of the country's largest and most efficient feedlots, meat packing and processing operation facilities. There is also a large number of pork, poultry, and dairy operations, along with three cheese processing facilities and several greenhouses producing many kinds of vegetables in Lethbridge County. One could have a very well-rounded diet by just eating the products grown here in Lethbridge County. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Lethbridge County Reeve, Tory Campbell. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Reeve, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by talking about you, and I want to get to know the man behind the Reeves chair a little bit. And I got to ask the same question I've asked everyone who's ever come on the show, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Tori? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I, I've never had it phrased quite that way, I guess. you know. Uh, so I think that... Um, for me, like if I go back uh, when I was younger, you know, my first opportunity to, to be on stu student council and then that kind of thing. If I go back to high school, I remember, um, you know, the first stab at being, you know, student council president. That was something that I that I really wanted to do and really wanted to be a part of. I'm, unfortunately, I was uh, unsuccessful in that bid, but uh, was still, uh, you know, uh, be I was able to be a part of that group. And, and I think just, uh, you know, the way I was brought up, mom and dad, my brother, I think we all you know, kind of, you want to be part of something bigger. And so I think it started at a young age. And then obviously, uh, on the side, I always had this kind of morbid fascination, I guess, with politics and always, uh, you know, followed from a distance. And, and I, I don't know if I ever saw myself necessarily running. Um, but I think I always knew that I, I probably would end up with some way, shape or form. So I uh, went to university, got a degree in political science, uh, was headed on a track where um, eventually I was going to work in a municipality. I, I was determined that I was going to get a municipal internship. And, and if not that, then then just find my way into a municipal uh, setting. And um, then as life does, kind of through a, through a curveball, I was able to go in a different direction with my life. Uh, we had our son, uh, rented some land and, and went farming on our own, kind of went away from the family farm and did our own thing. Um, Fast forward, obviously, you know, the kids start to grow up, you you have the opportunity to, to volunteer and be part of your kid's life, um, coach some hockey with my son, got involved with the minor hockey board. And, and I think it was at that point in my life, probably 2015, 2016, somewhere in there that, that I thought, you know, maybe I should really think about doing, doing something more, giving back. Um, we were in a good place. The kids were a little older. The farm was a little more established. My wife is, is my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. And so when the opportunity came in 17 to run for council here at Lethbridge County, um, you know, she was behind me. Um, and that was kind of the, you know, the, the really jumping off the deep end. And, uh, you know, fast forward to uh, 2021, uh, let my name stand again. And, and I was fortunate that year to be appointed to read. And uh, yeah, and here we are today. So there's a few things I want to unpack. First off, you're not the only one who ran for student body president and lost. Welcome to the club. I appreciate it. Glad that I'm not the only one. <laughs> Second, um, 
where did the political bug come from? Was mom and dad political or was it something, were you the black sheep of a family and politics was ingrained in you in a different way? No, like it, it was definitely not, definitely not dinner table conversation. You know, like I, I, I think, you know, you were where we grew up, obviously, you know, I, I grew up on a farm just north of cold Alberta and, and obviously a, a pretty blue part of the province. And uh, so, you know, I think that was, um, you know, we referenced the name off the get go. And that was, I remember, I remember being a kid and when, you know, you go to an auction sale with dad and, and dad would introduce my brother, Jesse and I, and, and he would say, this is our, this is my sons, Tori and Jesse. And, and, you know, the person would ultimately say, Tori, like Tori, that's not even a name. Like, what is that? And, and I remember dad would be, uh, you know, like Mulrooney, the Tories, Tori, you know? And so, uh, <laughs> love it or hate it that was that was his icebreaker into that um so no I I don't know where where necessarily I, I think I always I, I guess I'm a not a little I was gonna say I'm a little I'm very altruistic I think and I always thought that there was something you know kind of like romantic or uh you know something um higher than about about these these people and, and I I do I do kind of opine and and think about that a lot about how the state of the world that we're in right now it's not not necessarily a, a world of statesmen anymore and i and i look back and, and maybe not you know i i the people that i remember growing up you know i i'm old enough to remember you know kim campbell brian mulrooney uh john Cretchan. Uh, those were the those were the you know the ones you wrote the book report about in school and and i and i do think there was there it was just a different time a different environment a different climate as far as the, the political landscape and so I, I think I did always aspire to maybe a leadership role and, and, a, and a want to, to be a part of that and to, to do something bigger. Um, the actual, you know, minutia of the politics, the day in and day out, like, you know, the first time I went uh, out to Manitoba to my, to my wife's family, I met her parents and like the, you know, the conversation there was so much more political than anything I'd ever experienced. You know, my father-in-law is very passionate about that and, and he actually, after I ran, he ran, and he's also a municipal councillor now. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I can pinpoint it necessarily. I, I think it was always there in the back, but I don't know if it was, it, it definitely wasn't, uh, you know, if a you know, nature nurture kind of a thing, it definitely wasn't out of, out of my, uh, you know, uh, my upbringing for sure. I, I got to ask, because uh, as we have listeners from across Canada uh, who are municipal leaders, where in Manitoba is your father-in-law a counselor, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I don't know if I want to say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my father-in-law is Ed Maxwell. He's a, he is a uh, municipal counselor at the RM of Cornwallis, so just outside of Brandon. I, I know it quite well. I was just in the area this summer, so I'm going to have to now reach out to him and get him on the show. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what was it about the municipal draw that drew you into it? Because with the name of Tory, you would imagine that you could go run federally or provincially and it would be the perfect campaign slogan or campaign sign. But at the end of the day, you chose municipally in 2017. What was it about the municipal draw that made you decide that, you know what, I don't want a book report written about me like John Chere and John Cretchen did. I want a book report written about the Reeve of Lethbridge County or the counselor for Division Two in Lethbridge County. Well, I don't I don't know if I want that book report written either, but <laughs> no, I, I you know what, and I and I will I will plead a little bit of ignorance here because I, I think again, like grew up in the county, lived here my entire life. Uh, left very briefly, left for uh, a couple months to, to try the college experience, went to Olds College in uh, I guess it's been 18 to try that, didn't like that, moved home. Um, my then girlfriend, then fiance, now wife and I, we moved out into the city here in Lethbridge, lived in the city for about six months. So very, like we're talking a window of eight months where I've been removed from, you know, putting my head on a pillow in Lethbridge County. Um, but Having said that, I, I think for the very you know vast majority of that time in the county, it really didn't acknowledge what happened in the county, how things happened, um, who was doing what. You know, it, it was very much like I, I had a very um, loose understanding. Like I knew who the Reeve was, but I I don't even know if I 
really knew at that time what a read was. Like I'm like everyone else because that's the first thing that's right. What what is a read? Um, and it's like wow, well, it's a rural mayor. We, the the rurals here we we call the mayor a, a read. And um, so so yeah, I, I'll plead ignorance and I'll say I, I didn't have a very good understanding of what it was and all that. And I, and probably part of that, and I I guess I never really thought about it too much before was um, as my my farming career was starting and, and my dad's was winding down, um, he worked off the farm. And uh, his job at the time uh, was for the municipality. He worked for Lethbridge County, uh, ran a spray truck, ran a mower, was a part of the egg service board team here at Lethbridge County. Um, and I think, you know, probably that was, was a, you know, I, I'm an adult now and, and just dad and I having those conversations and knowing, knowing what he was doing here at the county and, and, just knowing my dad that he's that kind of guy that you know you don't cut corners you, you're going to do it right and uh, and I just appreciated that that I think what he brought to that role I think was kind of maybe flew in the face of what people thought it was to be at a municipality thought it was to be a municipal employee like I think there's this uh this idea in people's head that you know you're government and therefore you're wasteful and and you're not respectful of those taxpayer dollars but but I think as I'm sure most everyone that you've spoken to would attest to is that we're so lucky. Like we have some of the most devoted, long tenure, dedicated employees that that call this place home and and want to make it better. So so I think part of that too. Um, so can I challenge you on that a little bit for a second? Pardon? Can I challenge you on that for a second here for if you don't mind? Of so course, you've yeah. now you've you've now been in office for seven years coming up on your eighth year, well, almost seven years uh, in 20, at the end of, in October of this year. Do you think you've changed that attitude towards the municipality in your time as Reeve and counselor that people now don't look at, at the municipality as just something that people do, but more as an organization that's there to help the individual person in the county? I, that's a tough one. Um, if I, I ask was the to tough questions that, on the show, <laughs> yeah, no, to, to say that I have some that I have have shifted a narrative, I I think would be disingenuous for me to say that. But I think to say that we have made a difference, and that we have you know maybe maybe at least broached that subject, I think we've made a lot of people think. Um, like if I if I rewind to say like the fall of fall winter of 17 and think about the conversations that I had and, and let's say even leading up to running I was I was thoughtful in that I, I I reached out to people that I I respected the opinions of not the people that that want to scream and yell because their road has washboard or or that the miraculously the gravel road that they have live on has dust on it but but you know I I some people that I respected that I think were thoughtful and, and, you know, entrepreneurial and, and got what it was. Um, and I, and I think having those initial conversations about what, what a municipality is and what they saw to having those conversations with those same people. Now, I, I do think we have moved the needle. Um, I, I do think it resonates because I think that we have, I, I, and I, again, like I, I can't take credit for it. I've been fortunate to be with a good group of counselors. Um, you know, we've had, this is my second CAO that I've worked with. Like, I, I think we've been progressive. I think we've tried to really adapt and, and try and move forward. Whereas I think in municipal government, there, there is this, um, you know, an attraction, uh, you know, I think it's easy to keep doing what you're doing. I think it's easy to, to maintain the status quo. So, so I do think, yes, I think that people understand we've been very deliberate in the words we use, how we use them, how we say them. And, you know, we, we, we are very rely on level of service. Um, so every one of our departments, what is the level of service? So that goes to council and it says, we ask council, say, what do you want to see out of this? What, what level of service do you think is acceptable? So that it's something that, that we can stand behind, that we can, you know, defend. So then when a ratepayer says, hey, I live in, I live in this part of the county, um, I live out here and I see a greater X amount of times a year. And we can say, yeah, like there's a metric that we, this isn't just 
going with the flow we decided today, right? Like there, there's some science behind it. There, there's that asset management portion. And so I think through that, when we approach things, um, you know, from a fact, from a place of facts, and, and we're able to say that there's some science, there's some math behind this, I do think that we're able to shift that narrative. Are you going to win everyone over? Absolutely. Because the reality for us in Lethbridge County is, is that we've got 2,200 kilometers of road um, that are getting pounded every single day. And we're seeing some awesome things happen here. Um, irrigation has been an immense blessing for this region, but it's also brought all these other challenges where, where you used to have a three ton wheat crop, you now have a 25 ton potato crop. And, and these roads weren't built for that. And the way that we maintain them wasn't designed for that. So we've had to shift gears rapidly to try and get to a place where we're not so far behind. We're a little behind and we're trying to catch it. And I don't know if we will catch it, if we're being honest, because I think the, the, the pace of growth and just what we're seeing is, is phenomenal. Like our, our county, our producers in Lethbridge County are contributing over $4 billion a year towards Alberta's economy, and which is awesome. But then, you know, putting on that municipal hat, what that actually means, we don't see those $4 billion, right? Like, so, so it is... Sorry, I, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but... Um... No, I love it because that's the great thing because there's one thing I want to ask about that because you talk about the person who says, I don't see the greater as much as I think I should. You talk about the person who says, I think my tax dollars should be paid here. Now, when you're sworn in, now you are elected as a councillor and then the council appoints you as Reed, just for those clarifications, for those who are listening outside of Alberta and listen to this conversation. But when you're sworn in, you're not sworn in as Division Two County Councillor. You're not sworn in as this Division Councillor. You're sworn in as a Lethbridge County Councillor. You were sworn in as a County Councillor there to represent the entire community. How do you, with that large area of Lethbridge County, make decisions based on the good of the entire county, understanding that parts of your county are not going to get the 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 amount that they want every year because you have a limited supply of money well holy smokes chris like you <laughs> you hit the you hit it on the head right like a big and uh, sorry i'm gonna divert again so if i go too far bring me back yeah. but but i'm gonna divert first and then i'll come back what I, what I would say is I think you just hit on for me what is what is one of our biggest challenges that's facing municipal government right now is that is exactly what you said. How do we attract people? How do we get people to put their names on a ballot in a time when when you were at FCM, you, you saw you know that discussion around inclusion, diversity, getting people to run, but then at the same time, so much of the discussion was based on holy cow, this is tough. You are getting beat up on Facebook. You're getting beat up on X. You're getting beat up on Instagram. You're getting slammed in the press. So, so how do we get people to put their name forward, to, to go out there and to try and do this? And then once we get them here, pay a picture so we can get them here. But then once they're here, realize that, that your road, uh, the playground that's in your area, the community center that's in your area, Yes, awesome and so important to your residents, to our residents, but big picture this thing. That, that I, I think that is the, the number one challenge in, in municipal government and provincial government because we have become so siloed and we are there's so much self-interest right now. So uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. That, that's something that if you said, Tori, what's your biggest concern for municipal government right now is how do we get people and then once we get them here, how do we get them to open their minds and, and to look at that big picture? So I, I think that I'm very fortunate. I am I'm so proud of, of my council, our council here at Lethbridge County, because I think that we can, and we just had this conversation literally today um, about the ability to, to disagree and, and do it respectfully and walk away and say, you know what, I don't agree with you. I, I disagree with you. However, I, I think you're coming from an intelligent place. You've thought about this it, and, and I respect that. Does it always happen? Absolutely not. Like I, I'll be the first to admit I have, 
I, I've gone into the, you know, the dark side where it's like, I regret what I've said and what I thought and, and how I've interacted with others. Um, especially, you know, while, while wearing a, a suit jacket and, and tie and, and it's embarrassing. Like I'll be the first to own that. Um, but I think it's because we care. I, mean, I know it's because I care. Uh, and it's, it's so sorry. So that's my, I guess. No, tangent no. A little bit. So on that note, because you talk about how council works together, that's great. And I think that's very uh, important for this conversation, but on the flip side, Council working together is great, but if the community doesn't work together, that's a whole nother issue. Because if you have people who are angry about this part of the county getting uh, something over this part of the county, then really the work around the council table is not going to be effective unless there's buy-in from the community. Do you get a sense when you talk to your residents of Lethbridge County that they understand that this is not a division versus division issue? This is a Lethbridge County issue or a challenge or an accomplishment when there is a new park installed in Division 2 that benefits not only Division 2, but Division 4, Division 6. Yeah. Uh, is, it a, is it a challenge? Absolutely. I, I, think it's, I think it's so you know, multifaceted, where we have to approach it from so many angles. Um, you know, we have a terrific uh, communication staff here. We have uh, two people that, that are dedicated to, to doing just that, to crafting that message and, and putting that out there in the world in a way that, that I think it's easy to consume, that it's relatable, and that it shares that message that, that we are truly trying to be in this all together. We are, we are trying to be altruistic. We are trying to do the right thing the, and we talk about it all the time, like uh, it's that, you know, the rising tide uh, lifts all boats, all those things. And I mean, as I sit and talk to you right now, Chris, my office window literally looks across the street at the city of Lethbridge at, at their office building. And, you know, I'm across the street from city hall and, and it's kind of that, uh, um, was it, was it uh, Trudeau senior? Was, was it like, you know, sleeping next to the elephant? Uh, you know, kind of thing where it's, it's, it very much is like that. Like we have, we have so many good things going on with the, the city of Lethbridge and we can't ignore them. If you look at the map and, and you look at it, you got this big, huge city right smack dab in the middle of our, our I mean, urban center in the middle of the, of our rural municipality. And, but it's trying to, how do you relate? How do you, how do you do that? And then you take on top of that, we're talking about five smaller urbans that lie within our boundaries and, and again, it's trying to build those relationships, show that respect, and and try and collaborate and 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 be respectful. Not just show, but, but be genuine in what you're doing and and say, you know, our CAO Cole and I, Cole Beck and I, you know, we we look at each other and and it's let's do the right thing. We're gonna do the right thing, and and not everyone's gonna like it every time. But if we if we are genuine and we are serious in our desire and our will to do the right thing. Are you going to take, you're going to take some flack. You're, you're going to take some of that for sure. But I think in the greater, and, my, and, uh, and you know, I, I'm a, I think I'm an example of this. I've lived it is that I, I've been able to, you know, hopefully move things forward. We've been able to move things forward in a way that I think that they might, you might not always agree with what we're doing. You might have some questions about why we're doing it. But I, I think that we've kind of been able to press that hill where it's like, you can't question our motivations. Our, we are motivated by doing the right thing. And as long as we can keep doing those things, I think we keep building that trust. And I think it just sets us up further down the road for those next hurdles. So I want to turn to the Lethbridge County as a whole, not that we haven't been talking about it for the last few minutes, but I want to ask a poignant question. But before I do, I'm going to preface it by saying this for those who are listening. This is a conversation between the Reeve and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not a policy of council. This is his opinion and his opinion alone. I see the smile for those who are listening on uh, audio. The Reeve has a big grin on his face. So I'm assuming he knows what the question is probably going to be because he's probably heard that speech a few times on this show. But Reeve, in your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest challenge or challenges facing Lethbridge County today? We already talked about the municipal challenge, but what is the county challenge right now? Uh, I would say water, uh, so potable water and, and wastewater are our two biggest challenges at Lethbridge County. 
if I go back to where I kind of touched on earlier, is we have so much opportunity here with what irrigation has meant to our producers, their ability to produce raw goods, their, their ability to grow crops, raise crops. Um, and we have seen tremendous interest, interest in this region and then adding value to those crops, processing those crops. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, agri-food processing takes water. It's a lot of water. So the sole supplier for the region right now is that um, an entity across the street from me right now is the city of Lethbridge. Um, we're all very readily aware, um, you know, extremely cognizant of what's happening in the world right now as far as, uh, um, you know, we're facing, a, we're facing an we were are facing an unprecedented drought here in southern Alberta. Um, you know, luckily we have had some some spring moisture, which has been much needed. But the strain on on our ecosystem, on that water shed, um, you know, can't be understated. We're we're definitely not out of the woods yet. Um, you know, you look to the north of us. Um, you know, we were at FCM there uh, a week ago, last over a week ago, and you know, you the importance of water and and your access to water and and what that means, like it's so critical. So I, I would say for us here in Lethbridge County, definitely trying to get our arms around what we can do to future proof ourselves and, and set up that next council, set up our residents, um, you know, support our rate payers. Um, that would be challenge number one A. That was the same challenge that when I did my first draft plan in, I guess it would have been the winter of 2018. Uh, we talked about water then. Um, has some of the conversation shifted for sure where our priorities lie? Uh, we have two water co-ops that deliver water to our rural residents. Um, you know, their ability to, to grow, to access what they need as far as infrastructure, um, the infrastructure that they have now, how do they build that out further, and then how do they access license, and then ultimately just the, the raw water itself. So it, it, we come at it from a number of different perspectives, but the water. Okay, so water, wastewater, and... I want to ask the stupid question, but I, I'm afraid I'm going to ask the stupid question. I'm going to look very stupid, but I'm going to ask anyway, because I think it's important. White wastewater upgrades, infrastructure upgrades comes at a cost. You mentioned taxpayers. You mentioned the rate payers of your community. Let's be honest. Things are more expensive than they were five years ago. Things are more expensive than they were three years ago. To do any major infrastructure upgrade in this country right now, you're looking at millions, if not double digit millions of dollars for water. Then you put into the factor of rural Canada, which you are part of, means that that could be even more. How do you balance the growth of your community on the backs of the people who live in your community without hurting them financially? Holy smokes. Again, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think that's the the juggling act that we find ourselves in is, is that we are we are so blessed in so many ways to have what we have, to have the people doing what we're doing, to have these producers out there, you know, feeding the world, but then you know also at the same time acknowledging that that if you know if we want to want to break it down and say who is impacting our infrastructure, who's using this infrastructure. Um, you know, it's those same producers. And, and I think that, that we've been able to have some really constructive and some good conversations about that. And I think that there's an acknowledgement that if we tie it back to that level of service, our residents, uh, our rate payers, they want to see that level of service, not only maintained, but they want to see us try and improve upon that. And there's an acknowledgement that comes with that, that, that that's going to take money and there's only one rate payer, there's only one taxpayer, we, we all know that. So when you have the federal government, the provincial government, and, and us coming and saying, we need more, we need more, we also know that that's not realistic, that's, that, that's not sustainable, right? So I think it's how do we diversify, what can we do from a, a tax base standpoint to, to make sure that we're trying to spread that burden out? Um, where does our opportunity lie? I, I think there's a lot of exciting things happening, especially here in Southern Alberta. Like I, I think that as the as the city, uh, as we in the city work together on some of that, I'm hopeful that we can align more closely on that. The, the Lethbridge City Airport, for instance. Um, what does that mean for shipping, logistics, um, 
and not only passenger, because I think there is an appetite that for, for passenger air, but what does that look like from a shipping logistics trend? Uh, you know, we have some land around the airport, the city has land around the airport. What does that look like? Um, we've seen some interest in renewables. Um, that's obviously, a, as I'm sure you're aware, a, a hotly contested um, subject because I, I think we, we need, we have, we have a very clear mandate from our rate payers to, to maintain and protect our, our irrigated lands, to protect our prime, our prime agricultural lands. But is there an opportunity then for some, you know, so, some land that's maybe a little more marginal? Is there an opportunity for, for wind turbines for solar? Again, acknowledging that that is very much a, a can of worms that when we open it, um, we have to deal with it. But I think we have to be brave enough to have those conversations. Um, I've talked about the agri-food processing. I think we've seen some tremendous growth with the industry that we already have. So how can we support them? And then to the point of the water, how do we then, how do we balance this? Um, you know, what can we, where do we plant our flag as, as far as what we are and what we can attract that maybe doesn't put such a strain on that infrastructure, um, doesn't require that, that, that massive input uh, of those utilities. Um, so I, I think it's having those discussions, being frank, knowing what you are, knowing what you aren't, and, and then trying to balance all that. Because again, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a I'll teach myself here. I'm an almost 40 guy. Uh, you know, two kids that are in high school or, or both will be in high school next year, you know, two years away from graduation for my son. And and I get it. Like, you know, I, I get it. it. It is not easy out there. You know, my, my wife and I both work off the farm. We both work on the farm. Um, so I very much get the, and I, I again, just to be here again, I, I think that's given me such a perspective in when I wear this hat is that I, I get it. I get what people are going through. It's not easy. It's a slug, and I and I do worry about the world that we leave for our children. So so how do we then get there? Like you said, without without breaking our backs in the meantime. So so I think it is. And again, I give my council a lot of credit. They get it. They're they are in our community. I, I give our councilors a ton of credit. They they are you know at the grocery store, at the bank, at the post office, at the rink, uh, you know, playing crib. They're, they're in these communities, they are talking to people, they are listening to people. And, and I think that if we, as long as we keep doing that, as long as we keep listening, I think we can you know, try and, and, and keep the train on the tracks. I think where you see it fall off is where they stop listening and you start siloing yourself and, and think that you're, you're no longer part of that community. And, it, and I, I think that, again, if we can continue down this path, I think we'll find a way forward where we can strike that balance. It's, it's, it is, it's the challenge though, obviously, you, you know that. So every community has their challenges and I, and I got accused on this show by, uh, I, I'm assuming a mutual friend because she's well known in the rural municipalities of Alberta, Cara Westerland, uh, beautiful Brazo County and second uh, vice president of RMA. She said, when are we going to talk about the good things that are going on in my community of Brazo County? So I've had to ask this follow-up question to the challenges. What's the thing that you are proud of? What, what is the thing that when you go talk to other municipal leaders from across Canada, across Alberta, at RMA, at FCM, you say, you know what, you're doing it good. Lethbridge County is doing it better. We've got this solidified into why we are such a great place. What is that thing for Lethbridge County and yourself? Holy cow. You, uh, Feel like I, I really feel grossly unprepared. I feel like I didn't do my homework. These are these are great questions, Chris. Um, hey, I I learned so much about these from these interviews. It is so uh, I I appreciate so many people who take time out of their busy schedule to learn because I don't think municipalities get to their fair share of kudos, and it's always great to hear from the Reeves, the people at the top chair, the mayors, the wardens, and some the directors in BC about what are the things that that we should be proud of. What's the thing that we should be proud about our communities? We we never tell those stories. We only talk about the bad things that are going on in our communities. I think it's the people. Like I, I really do. Like I, I think it's the people. I think we're so lucky. There are so many. Like yeah, to to your point. Like there, there are so many great places to live. I, I'm, like you know, I am 
I am Mr. Canada. I I love saying that I'm a Canadian. I love being a Canadian. I, I probably, and I, I'm probably going to, you know, rile some people up. I say that, but like, I, I would rather say I'm, I'm so much prouder to be a Canadian than I'm an Albertan. And not because I don't love being an Albertan, but God, do I love being a Canadian. I just think we have so much to be proud of. And I, I think we're, we're such a, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. And then I, I think if I hyper focus that down, I, I say that to where I live right now. I, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. My wife and I were sitting outside of our front door. We got a little deck outside. And, you know, as we sit there, you look out on a, a beautiful half section of, uh, of cropland. And the, the, we have some flax growing there. It's probably about six inches high. And, you know, the weeds haven't grown in yet. It, it, it looks great. And, and you look off to the, you know, look, look to the southwest. Um, and we, we could see Chief Mountain and, and it's just beautiful. You, you see the Milk River Ridge and it's just such a, we're so blessed to live in such a beautiful place. And there's so many people here that get that. They, they, they know that we're so lucky to have what we have. Um, you know, we're fortunate to have this city. We're, ha we're fortunate to have this, this metropolitan hub um, that provides so many amazing services to our residents, to, to the residents of Coldwell, Pitcher Butte, Noblesburg, Colhurst. Barons, but then at the same time, you also get to step out of it a little bit and, and kind of do your own thing, have, have that, have your opportunity to just do what you want kind of a little bit. And I think it's, it just, it attracts people here that, that are just so proud to call this place home. And I, I think when we see those issues, like, you know, um, if I go back about the, you know, the washboard or the, you know, maybe the, the grass in the ditch hasn't been mowed yet or I think it's because people care. It's because people take pride in, in being here and living here. They take pride in, in that, that whether it's an acreage, a farmyard, uh, group country residential, whatever it is, where, or a hamlet, wherever they live in Lethbridge County, they take pride in that. And, and I think that that then kind of spills out into the community where it's like, they hold us to a higher standard because of the standard that they set on their property in their home and then we're held to that standard and, and i mean for some people that is a tough standard because holy smokes you know like they 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 um they, they put everything into that and they, they hold us to that standard so it's good it's a challenge and i, and I think it keeps us on our toes and, and keeps us looking forward and, and working harder so i i think the people are our biggest asset where we are i think we have a great community i think we have a lot of people that care i think there's a you know, it's that Alberta Canadian kind of like people want to support local. They they want to see the economy grow. They want to see people stay here. They want to see people thrive here. So I think that feeds into that. Um, we're so lucky geographically. You know, we're a couple hours to Cosby. We're a couple hours to Great Falls. You know, I can see the mountains. I can be in the mountains in less than two hours. If you know, I need to head east. You jump on number one and, and you head east. Um, we're, we're so lucky in that sense to have all of that right here, have as much sunshine as we get, have, have to be blessed with irrigation, that investment that's been made by, you know, my predecessors for the farmers before me, um, by our government to, to have the vision to, to create the greatest irrigation system in the world, bar none. And, and then to have these people then taking that and growing these crops and, and growing crops that are just, you know, we're, we're home to an organic, Lethbridge County, you know, we have organic and organic onion farm, we have potato farms, we have seed potato farms, sugar beets, the number of crops listed that are grown in our county is just mind blowing to, to see people then taking hascaps and turning it into wine and, you know, they have their dairy and then on the side of the dairy, they're making cheese and cheese curds and all these cool cheeses that you'd only see in Europe. And, and it's just that ingenuity that, that Alberta, I'm going to put my head down and do it. And it, and it all just ties into, I think, what really becomes the fabric of what we are. I love, so I, I prior to the interview, I traditionally do, I do a little search on the website. And there's one part on the Lethbridge County website that said you could literally have a dinner or lunch in Lethbridge County with all the things that were created in Lethbridge County because you have such a diverse agri-food uh, industry in the community. And by when you just were talking about it, I was like, it's true, by the way he's talking. It sounds like it's true. Because we all know people a little pump up themselves on their websites, but I appreciate that. 
I want to turn to my last subject because I know I'm cautious of time here and hopefully you have an extra five minutes for me before I let you go. And I want to talk about one in one thing that I'm very passionate about, and that is tourism. I think tourism is the unsung hero for a lot of people. Now, you've already talked about the agri-food sort of industry, but what are the tourist destinations in your community that you say, you know what, if you come to Lethbridge County, if you come to the surrounding area, you need to come see this. What is that for you? I I think I think probably I would I would start off where I just left off is that that agri food agri food tourism piece right now I think we're seeing a boom for it right now in Lethbridge County like I said um, you know Little Gem Wines um, you know kind of created as a small family thing where they were grow some has caps and then it was like well maybe we can turn these has caps into wine and then it was you know a tasting room and then well maybe you know maybe they have, you know, Dutch heritage. So maybe we can have some Dutch food in the tasting room. And then, well, maybe we can sell some products. And it just grows and grows into this thing where it's it's kind of this iconic little thing where it's, you know, like, um, I think it was last fall, um, my brother, his wife, mom and dad, uh, my wife and I, was just like, you know, it's Friday afternoon, book a, a tasting a tasting room. You go there, taste all these different Haskap wines, all these different wines, have a little food. And you're in the county, you're literally like on the farm in the county. And, and for me, maybe it doesn't have, I mean, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. Like, I, I love being on the farm, um, but you know, like you can look out the window and see there's the tractor and he's washing it off or they just change the oil or whatever. And, and, and for me, it's, I'm nerding out because I love that stuff. But I think for other people, it's so great to expose them to that, that it's all right there. You know, you, they, they give you a tour in the back where they, where they process. And so I, I would say that that, that you know that's one example like we have uh you know Broart pork um again I, I i mentioned buyers and what they're doing with the the cheese crystal springs cheese again kind of put that little store right on the farm have the dairy in the back the processing in the front so cool just to be go to be able to go there and and you know you see the cows you see the milk and then you sit there and you have the ice cream and it, it's a sunday drive uh, uh, or a monday drive whatever it is and it's so cool just to be able to be right into it. I think that agri food tourism has, has been a has been really cool for us. I, I give a ton of credit to Erin Crane and her team at, at Tourism Lethbridge. They, you know, they believe in what, what we are as a county. They believe in what we are as a region, and that tie between bringing the the rural and the urban together and marrying those two. Um, I, I give Erin a ton of credit. She's been a, a real champion of ours. And I think the work that she's done has been terrific on, on selling that agri-food piece and, and what that means to us. I think it's as we, you know, uh, get further and further away from the farm, people lose sight of where the food comes from and what that means. And, and to be able, like you say, to go to, um, you know, go to a restaurant, go, go three blocks down the street to the Telegraph Tap House and, and, and they do a terrific, you know, um, job of highlighting that local food, everything on the menu that at some point in time it's probably touched local somehow, some way, whether it's the beef, the pork, the chicken, the milk, the bread, um, the vegetables. It's so cool. So I, I would definitely start there. And then after that, I think it's as a county, um, you know, we have some, we have some great tourist opportunities, but I think we are again rely heavily on our urban partners. You know, what the city has to offer is tremendous in, in their history. And what that means, um, you go to the town of Coldell, you know, the Gem of the West, the museum, you've got birds of prey, um, all that to, to work off of. And then you go to Pitcher View, again, maybe more of that agricultural kind of background in the, the Prairie Tractor Museum, um, tractor poles in the summer and all that history. But I, I think we would probably lean on them a little bit more. Um, again, I, I'm an unabashed supporter of this region. I think that if we can kind of get ourselves in a room and agree to work together, we have so much opportunity. And, and I think we're doing it. Do I think we've met our potential? I, absolutely not. But I think that tourism piece is a huge part of that. How do we get people here? Because once we get people here, they're going to want to come back because it, it's just awesome. 
Well, I'm looking forward to coming back to Lethbridge County later on, actually literally about a week after this airs, because I'll be in Coldale for their opening of their brand new facility and the start of the, uh, so hopefully I'm going to be able to find some great cheese uh, uh, areas in Lethbridge County, because when you say cheese, I need cheese. I need to bring it back because I'm a a cheese aficionado, if you want to call it that. So I want to try some beautiful Alberta cheese. But before I go, I have one last question for you, and it's the important one. We already talked a little bit about it, but I want you to expand if you want and take as long as you want to answer this. What makes Lethbridge County such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? I think we have the best of so many worlds. I wouldn't say both worlds, I would say so many worlds. We have so much to offer here. We are, again, we're the geographic element. We're so close to everything. You're you're an hour and a half away from Waterton. You're you're right in. If you want to go to Park Lake and, and grab a Crystal Springs ice cream on the way home, you have that opportunity. You want your kids to to grow up and be raised in a small town. You have those. You know, they're right there. You know, my my kids go to school in Coldwell. I've gone through the system in Coldwell just as I did and my parents did and. And you know, like if I'm not identifying as, as Lethbridge County, I'm, I'm kind of pulled out. I'm a huge, you know, supporter of the town and, and what they've done. Just my bias is there. That was my hometown, you know. Um, I didn't live there. That was my hometown. Um, I, I feel like Jack Van Regen's uh, head is uh, just bursting with pride right now that you're dropping his community's name every few seconds. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, I could. Again, like I, I'm a, the, the probably, I, I'm a, I'm probably, I think I could probably identify as a, uh, you know, politics nerd, a political nerd, a municipal government nerd, but, but I'm a farmer at my, the root of my soul and I love agriculture more than anything else. And so to, to be somewhere, to be able to do that, to provide for my family and to do that and, and that, 100% built the bridge to, to get me to where I am here sitting in this chair because, you know, if I would have ran as a 32 uh, year old guy that was, uh, you know, pick your poison, you're in retail, IT, whatever it is, that just doesn't resonate the same way as a guy that farms in Lethbridge County, right? Like, I, I think we need to be honest. So to, to, to be a part of that, to, to have, you know, have a, a foot in that pool as well, and then to be able to see what these guys are doing, these, these people are doing, these producers, it's unreal. Like um, I, I'm, I'm always, uh, I will always kind of uh, lean on my potato growing friends and the people that grow potatoes. I just think it's such a cool way to make a living, and it's just cool. Like uh, like their their equipment is way cooler than I'm a dryland farmer, and like the equipment's cooler, the crops cooler, and like they get to like grow potato chips and French fries. Like how cool is that? You know, like it. So so I, I think that just the opportunity that lies here um uh, the people the the geographic location just the ability to to kind of go seamlessly from downtown Lethbridge and in 10 minutes you can be out in the coolies um you know it's just I think we're just so lucky to just be able to have that freedom to kind of go between these different worlds and yet they still coexist and to have so much opportunity like, to go to the University of Lethbridge and then, you know, like where I live, I'm just kind of out on my own there, you know, like it's like my dog barking at coyotes all night long. That's all it is, you know, so it's, it is really cool. I, I, I really do think I, I am genuine when I say I, I love this community. I love this place. And it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's obviously very special to me that I got to do this for, a, you know, a, there's a moment in time where I got to sit in this chair and, and I got to, um, to do this I'm, I'm very eternally grateful for that opportunity and what it's meant to me and my family and the the doors that it's opened the, the conversations that i've had that i never would have had before the, the amount i've learned god i've i've learned more in seven years of doing this than in you know the previous you know 20 years it's it's remarkable what you learn about everything from people you learn so much about people you know again living on the farm working on the farm by myself with my family you know, you never have to coexist in a in a workplace, and and I'm we're lucky here. We're not full time counselors, but but you have to work in a team. You have to work with yeah. people. You have to rely on people. You have to support people. 
So just that was a huge learning experience for me. Uh, and then just everything else that comes with it. So yeah, um, as you can tell, um, giving a thorough and long-winded answer is not a challenge for me. So I, I will apologize again for that. I, I don't hey, know if, if you didn't questions. say anything during an audio, usually audio only show, I think it would end really badly for those who are listening going, what's going on in Lethbridge County? The Reeve doesn't like to talk. What's that all about? But they, I'm assuming they've gotten a sense that the mayor is, the Reeve is passionate about his community and is passionate about his region. Um, Corey, I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day because I know you're as not only Reeve, but farmer and you got your job as well. So I appreciate taking time out of your day and sitting down and chatting with me. It's always a pleasure to learn more about our great municipalities across this great country. So thank you so much for being part of the show and being part of your community. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, again, apologies for uh, my lack of succinctness, but uh, no, it's, it's cool. As you, yeah. You nailed it. Uh, I love, I do love this stuff. Uh, I love our community. I love Lethbridge County. I, I think that, uh, you know, I'd be lying if I said, uh, you know, I, I think you should live anywhere else. You should live here. Uh, you should, you know, come here, start your business, raise your family. And uh, it's, it's a great place. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our great interviews that we have coming up over the next few weeks. Now, we're going to be taking a break over the month of August, but please be sure to come back in September when we have a great new addition to the show, which we're eagerly anticipating a launch later on this month of July, so you do not want to miss that. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking. Thank you.